In the news, South South insists Southerner must replace Buhari. Across Africa, Congo Brazzaville presidential candidate hospitalized. On the global scene, Saudi Arabia, UAE, expand COVID-19 vaccination drive. And in business, BUA cement loses 162 billion naira in a week. And now to sports, Arsenal's cutting her hopes boosted by 20 million pounds Liverpool clause. Details coming up shortly. This is TOS Television, your digital first Pan African news network. I am Merciful Ajinamo, and this is TOS News 360. People's Democratic Party struggle to hammer out a deal on the zoning of the presidential slot ahead of the next general election. The South South has said a Southern must replace President Muhammad Buhari in 2023. The zone said their position was in line with the zoning arrangement of the two parties. The South South had in several position arguments maintained that it should be allowed to complete its two terms of eight years, which was cut short by the defeat of former President Goodluck Jonathan in 2015. In the spirit of fairness and equity, most individuals from the zone had warned repeatedly that none should allow himself to be used to scuttle the zone's chance of producing the next president. Yesterday, the pan niger Delta Development Forum further advanced the position further, saying there would be no compromise in the resolve to have a southerner as the next president in 2023. And former President Goodluck Jonathan should not expect the support of Governor Nielsen Wiki of River State should he agree to contest the 2023 presidential election on the platform of the All Progressives Congress. Wiki, who served as Minister of State for Education in the Jonathan administration, said there was no way he could work against the interests of his party, PDP. Jonathan is a member of the PDP, but speculations have been growing about the possibility of his defection to APC to contest the next presidential election. And now to any good, the state government said it has started rolling out COVID-19 vaccines to the 17 local government areas of the state to ensure that health workers, strategic leaders and highly vulnerable get their jobs. George Ugo, the executive secretary of the Enugu State Primary Health Care Development Agency, speaking with journalists on Saturday, notes that the vaccination exercise would last 10 days. The Enugu government, 12 days ago, received 65,000 400 doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines from the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Abuja. In talking insecurity, gunmen have raised the Isi Alambano Police Divisional Headquarters located at Umo Lemai in Imo State. The gunmen who in invaded the Divisional Headquarters Amory on Saturday night freed suspects in the detention facility and carted away arms. It was gathered that the gunmen on arrival condoned off the Divisional Headquarters located at Umo Eze Road and opened fire. According to Punch, the gunmen sacked police officers on duty, freed suspects and invaded the facility's armed storage department before setting it ablaze. The leading opposition candidate in Congo Brazzaville's presidential election is in hospital with COVID-19 while voting is underway. In a video circulating on social media, 61-year-old Guy Brice Parfait Kolelas is seen briefly removing an oxygen mask to tell his supporters that he is fighting death. Kole Laos, who is diabetic, is one of six candidates running against President Denis Sasso Ngueso. Fam family members have said they are trying to arrange for him to be evacuated to France for treatment. Nigeria's female parliamentary caucus has hailed the emergence of Samia Hassan as the first female president of Tanzania and the only female executive leader in East Africa. The lawmakers stated these in a congratulatory message signed by its board of trustees on Saturday. They also commiserated with the people of Tanzania over the loss of its immediate past president, John Magufuli. This is your digital first Pan African News Network, TUS Television, and you're watching TUS News 360. More stories after the break. You're welcome. Health authorities in Morocco reported 444 new COVID-19 cases, 484 recoveries and 8 related deaths over the past 24 hours as its vaccination campaign continues. Since its emergence in Morocco, the COVID-19 pandemic has infected a total of 491,463 people and caused 8,763 deaths nationwide. Testing continues unabated as 11,678 new tests were issued over the past 24 hours, bringing a total number of issued tests 
to 5,369,133. Hospitals across Morocco are currently caring for 406 severe cases amid 3,830 total cases across the country. 25 citizens had to undergo invasive intubation while 239 patients are on breathing support through the use of ventilators. Morocco has now vaccinated 4,264,168 citizens with their first COVID-19 vaccine, of which over 2 million received their second dose. And now to news on the global scene, Saudi Arabia and neighboring United Arab Emirates said on Sunday, health authorities have expanded COVID-19 vaccinations to all citizens and residents aged 16 and above as Gulf state raised to bring the virus under control. Riyadh said the health ministry will start inoculating its population aged 16 and above with Pfizer vaccines, while the citizens and residents aged of 18 and above will have AstraZeneca shots. It did not provide further details. The government said on Saturday around 3 million vaccines had been distributed across 500 vaccination centers. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan have reportedly tested positive for COVID-19 disease on Saturday, two days after receiving his first vaccine dose. Government officials said urging people not to be deterred from getting vaccinated. Pakistan's vaccination rollout has been met with widespread vaccine hesitancy and Khan's positive test could serve as a setback to the inoculation drive in a country of 220 million people, health experts said. And Ecuador's health minister resigned Friday after just 19 days in the job, the government said, amid a growing scandal over the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines to well-connected figures. In his letter of resignation, Rodolfo Fadon stressed that he was stepping down from strictly personal reasons. Fafan replaced Juan Carlos Zevalos, currently under investigation for influence peddling, which fled the country for the United States after his resignation. Nauru's begins at the spring equinox, which the sun crosses the equator and day and night are equal length. It is mainly celebrated in Iran, Afghanistan, the Kurdish regions of Iraq and Turkey, as well as by Parsis in India and diaspora communities around the rest of the world. This year, which is the Persian calendar, is the year 1,400 celebration in many places have had to take place amid coronavirus restrictions. In this COVID-19 ward in Firuz Badi Hospital, Tehran, healthcare workers celebrated with their patients by setting up a ceremonial table covered with symbolic food items. And now talking to business, shares in BUA Cement PLC on the Nigerian Stock Exchange lost a total of 162.5 billion euro this week, as the shares of Nigeria's second largest cement manufacturer declined by 4.8 naira per share. The 4.8 naira decline in BUA Cement share price led to the 162.55 million naira loss in the market billion naira loss in the market capitalization of the cement tiger. This move can be linked to the sustained sell down in the market as local investors cycle out funds from the market in search of impressive yields in the fixed security space. You are still watching News 360 on TOS television. More stories after the break. Do stay. Thanks for staying. Still in business, Nigeria Interbank Settlement System PLC recently announced the launch of the NQR Repayment Solution, an innovative payments platform implemented on behalf of all financial service providers. The new Quick Response Code Solution offers a robust platform that delivers instant value for P2B and P2P transactions by simply scanning to pay. It is a solution that will unify the available closed QR code schemes in the country for consistent user experience and accelerated digital adoption. This payment solution, designed to be low cost for merchants, would see shoppers scan a QR code generated by a seller to pay for an item. Each code will have unique details containing the information relating to the transaction and would link with a customer's banking app already enabled on the smartphone. In talking entertainment, although exes Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were declared legally single back in 2019, their divorce proceedings rage on as they work through a complicated custody battle regarding their six children. Earlier this week, their five-year case saw a major shakeup as Jolie filed new documents alleging Pitt of domestic abuse against her and their kids. Now we've learned their eldest son, Maddox Jolie Pitt, has testified in court and his words paint a negative relationship between the father and son. The 19-year-old son of Pete and Jolie reportedly gave testimony during the custody battle that a U.S. weekly source said wasn't very flattening toward Brad, 
Madox Jollipate said he does not use the pit portion of his last name on document that are non legal and is planning to change his name to Maddox Jolie. And Chris Jenner is breaking a silence about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West divers shortly before the final season of the family's long running reality show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, kicked off on Thursday night. Jenner sat down for an interview on Australia's The Carl and Jackie O Show and addressed Kanye's split publicly for the first time since her daughter filed for divorce in February. And now to sports, Baker wants to offload before close is triggered. Arsenal could be given a boost in their bid to sign Felipe Coutinho due to closing his transfer from Liverpool to Barcelona. According to the Express, Coutinho is 10 games away from triggering a close that would see Baka pay another 20 million euros to Liverpool after reaching 100 appearances. Baka are keen to avoid this and it is widely reported Coutinho will be sold this summer. Still in sports, the name of Nikola Milkinkovic is consistently linked with the Manchester United and it looks like the Old Trafford outfit really wants to secure a signature in the summer. According to Tuto Mesoto Web, Manchester United is strongly pressing to sign the Florentino star who will be out of contract in just over 15 months. Team WW claimed that it has now become clear that the Serbian central defender will not sign a contract extension with Ivaola and therefore he will leave in the summer transfer window. Last month, La Nezion reported that the 23-year-old player star can be signed in the next window for a maximum fee of 40 million euros. And that is TUS News 360 on your digital first Pan-African news network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TUS TV Network on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TUS Television Network. I am Merciful Ajinamo. Bye for now.